now, the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. This is going to be a fresh start. It's been going fast. Thank you and go green. Just how welcomed we, I felt with my family initially getting here. The excitement, uh, the genuine nature of people wanting to help, wanting to support. It's been awesome diving into this, the current roster, learning their stories. So there's a lot going on, but we're still pretty excited to be doing it. Last week, we were telling you about Michigan State hiring Jonathan Smith to be its next head football coach. And with early signing day on December 20th this year, Smith has been go, go, go ever since trying to rebuild the football program here in East Lansing. From the high school ranks to the transfer portal, Smith has been doing it all. And he had time with us this week to sit down and chat about the future and his vision of this program. And so with that, I want to thank you again for all getting more welcome. We got some work to do. I'm ready to go dive in and do that. Thank you. First of all, we appreciate you sitting down with us this week. We know you're a very busy man right now with um, signing day obviously coming up, but we'll just start with less than two weeks since being named head coach here. How have things been going since adjusting to life in East Lansing? Yeah, it's been going fast. Um, a couple things that stood out uh, for sure is just how welcomed we, I felt with my family initially getting here and then being here now a week and a half, meeting people, the excitement, uh, the genuine nature of people wanting to help, wanting to support. It's been awesome diving into this, the current roster, learning their stories, the, these players here, and then obviously our recruiting's taking place. Um, and starting on that, on that side of guys that had interest already in Michigan State um, and that kind of thing. So there's a lot going on, but we're still pretty excited to be doing it. Yeah, I mean, coming to this area obviously is a place that you really have never been before. So what has the adjustment been like trying to learn the area of recruiting and also in the transfer portal too? Kind of the area in general, I was looking forward to kind of a new adventure, uh, learning a bunch um, about that. Uh, learned early. First day I could go out on the road recruiting, went in the greater Detroit area and a bunch of high schools there and a bunch of good, you know, good players. Learned the history a little bit about how that has been a, a hotbed of of uh, you know college football players originating from there, and so that's been that's been fun. Getting to know high school coaches as much as I can uh, in, in this early part, um, because this landscape is different. There's a lot going on with the transfer portal and the yeah, signing dates coming on. Um, so managing that and confident in regards to building a roster, sustaining, retaining a roster, and then I'll add into that through the first signing date, and then there's gonna be a second signing date in February, and then the, there's a transfer portal at the end, so you can build your roster 3, 365 now. Yeah, you mentioned retaining players. Yesterday, Darius Snow announced his intentions to wanna to come back. What was maybe the conversations like with him, or what was your first impression of him and wanting, him wanting to be a part of the program? You know, early conversation, not just with him, about everybody. This is gonna be a fresh start, an opportunity to uh, kind of reset, get going in January and, and moving forward. Try to explain a little of the vision of how we want to do things. There's a lot of good guys around here. At the same time, I kind of understand with this landscape now what the opportunities are for college football, not just college football, all college athletes, maybe to explore some options. Um, and so that I understand where, where different mindsets were on that. Look, we're, we're asking those guys give us a chance in regards to moving forward. If that didn't feel quite right, completely understand if they want to explore other options. Yeah, what has it been like the reception from the current players that are still around of what you're teaching and preaching to them about what you want to build here? I, you know, I, I feel solid about it. Um, again, it, we're kind of doing it in a microwave, a short amount of time. The reality is, you know, they chose Michigan State for, for different reasons and a lot of that is still here. Michigan State, big time place education, fan base, uh, the town community itself, playing at a big time conference, all of that is the same. Uh, but we didn't get the opportunity to, you know, a lot of these recruiting processes are a year and a half of building a relationship there, connecting with their family network and building trust and visiting and all that. So we're doing it in a short, short span. And, uh, I think they've been receptive to that. You know, how do you typically use the transfer portal? Is that something you are very open to? I know a lot of people are, like Tom Izzo, he's not a big fan of it. Are you someone that is open to it? I, open to it without question. I think as the landscape goes, that's a way you can build your roster. And there's other ways, right, through the high school and development and the, even the small slivers, been junior college before. But you've got to use, in my opinion, uh, the portal as a supplement to the roster. Now again, going into year one, we'll see if it's used how much, um, but majority we still love the idea of building from the high school level up, supplementing through the portal. 
I know too, similar to the transfer portal, NIL is very big in the college football world these days. Is that something too that you try to really encourage within the program or how do you just view the way that is kind of taken over the sport? Yeah, we definitely encourage it. Um, we kind of describe it as a piece of the pie as guys are making decisions where they want to go. A part of that pie is the you know, opportunities to um, profit, expand off their name, image, and likeness. I think that's a piece that uh, the type of player we're looking for is a part of their decision. Along with the education they want to chase, the program, the location, the relationships, the current roster. So there's a lot of pieces of the pie, but one of them without question is NIL. Now you may remember back in 2012, Michigan State opened up the season at home against Boise State. And while a Le'Veon Bell hurdle was a memorable moment in a Spartans win that day, Smith was actually on the other sideline as a quarterback's coach for the Broncos. It was his only other time in East Lansing before getting hired. And when we come back, Smith is going to share his journey to becoming the 26th head coach in the history of Michigan State football. This segment is sponsored by MSU Healthcare. Experiencing a Spartans game is a lot like life. Farm Bureau Insurance sees the connection and is a proud supporter of Michigan State Athletics. Find an agent who can protect what matters to you. It all started with an idea. We came here with two kids and a suitcase. A business to proudly call your own. The most gratifying part of owning a business is the relationships that have formed over the years. Made even better by a reliable partner to support you every step of the way. Anytime we have any questions or we need any assistance, we can go to the entire team at MSU FCU. So when it's your moment, dream big. Welcome back to the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. At the introductory press conference of Jonathan Smith as the next head coach in the history of Michigan State football, Athletic Director Alan Haller said Smith was one of 12 candidates to interview at least once for the position. Smith made the top three, and after his interview, Haller knew he was the guy. And despite Smith not having a lot of connections to the Midwest, his background proves he is ready for this opportunity. Leaving your alma mater, obviously you played quarterback at Oregon State. How tough was that decision to leave that place that you really have called home for a long time? Definitely tough. Um, place means a ton to me. Uh, really did a lot for me and my family, that, that spot. And so those decisions aren't taken lightly um, and not always easy, especially there's some great people back there. Can't think that uh, place enough. When you, because you walked on at Oregon State, correct? I did. How did that process come about of you getting that opportunity? Uh, kind of, yeah, long story that I'll try to condense, but ultimately I was playing high school football and there was an offensive lineman I was playing with that Oregon State was recruiting. And so through that uh, evaluation of his tape, they kind of got eyes on me. Later in the process, uh, after my senior year season was done, kind of invited me to, to walk on more or less promised an equal opportunity, and they lived up to the word. Mike Riley was the head coach at the time, Paul Crisp was the offensive coordinator, my first coach. Both those guys talked about equal opportunity, they lived up to that. I just had to pay for it early on, and, and then ended up being able to play. You haven't earned that position too, is that sort of how you would like the players now to just earn their position in their starting? Yeah, similar, right? I, I experienced it as a player. Uh, they get opportunity to go earn it. Uh, it's definitely competitive on that, and so, because of my experience as a player, recreating that now as a head coach, I want to uh, be that type of coach that everyone's got an opportunity to improve and chase down their dreams. And being a quarterback yourself, obviously, three quarterbacks have recently entered the transfer portal. Um, how do you view that position and what do you look for out of the quarterback position? Well, there's definitely opportunity, right? Uh, uh, open competition starting in January. I go back to a similar this day and age, uh, that's an opportunity for these guys to go and explore. Um, but I'm confident with the track record and currently what's out there to, to recruit, we're going to land in a good place. And I saw actually not too long ago you guys just announced part of your coaching staff, six guys coming with you to, from uh, Oregon State obviously. What do they bring to the table that just makes your job a little easier as a head coach? Well, you've been with me for a long time and deeply trust these guys. I mean, some of the reason I'm in this seat now is because of them. Um, and so, yeah, wanted them to be a part of it, bring, bring them over. They were excited about uh, so this opportunity. And so, yeah, it does feel good that you're bringing a core group of guys that speak the language, been, been with me for a while. And then that's another piece that's going on right now is finishing the coaching staff because that's not the entire staff. We don't have all the spots filled right now take that really seriously, uh, deliberate in that approach, want to get that right. Uh, and so there's 
good candidates out there and we're exploring those right now. Yeah, someone um, like Harlan Barnett, who obviously was, he filled in this past season, went through a very different experience that he probably never anticipated. Yeah. Have you had a chance to meet him or what his vision was and just what has that been I did. Like? It was really the second day I was here, Monday. I uh, had an opportunity, sat down with over an hour. Uh, you talk about a good man, loves this place, and I do think did a really good job through the uncertainty of that season of kind of writing the ship. I give him some credit uh, watching a few games from last year. Those, these guys were playing. I thought showed some character. Had a couple late victories, a couple games they were up and could have finished a little better. I mean, they, these guys played hard throughout the season. I don't know what the plan is right now, but does he anticipate staying around or do you anticipate him staying? No decision on that yet. Um, we've been in conversation. He's exploring some options too. I mean, he's a good football coach and has a great track record. and so. We're on the same page of communication, but no decision yet. And then when you have gone out to areas like Detroit and seen the talent that they have out there, meeting the coaches, is there anything that stands out that maybe is different of when you were recruiting out west? Uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I don't know, dramatically stands out. I think the genuineness of the high school coaches that I met for the first day, I think that's consistent uh, a lot of places, but there's some pride in coming from Detroit, playing football there. Those high school coaches caring about the players they're dealing with. Um, there's good, good players that love football in Detroit. Um, just meeting a few of them, that stands out. Smith isn't the only first year coach on campus this year. Women's basketball coach Robin Fralick has the Spartans off to a 7-1 start this season. And when we come back, we're going to head over to the Breslin Center to see what's led to MSU's early season success. This segment is sponsored by the Lansing Sports Commission. 